break us, O oh God. Bend us like a reed, and don't break us like an oak. As the scriptures say, that he who stiffens his neck to rebuke will be suddenly broken beyond healing. O oh God, we've known for years what we ought to do, and yet we have wavered, we have doubted, we have not sought your face, and we repent. I'm sorry, Lord. We need you. We love you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you guys have your Bibles, go to 2 Corinthians 5. So the bulk of the text is verse 6 to 15. So we are always confident and know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And we are confident and satisfied to be out of the body and at home with the Lord. Therefore, whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to be pleasing to him. Really, are we? Guilty as charged. Are we obedient? Do we listen to the first word he tells us? I mean, I understand about testing the spirits, yes. But are we seeking to please him? Or are we just stuck in our routine? For we must all appear before the tribunal. Or let's call it what it is. It's the judgment seat of Christ. So that each may be repaid for what he has done in the body, whether good or worthless. Therefore, because we know the fear of the Lord, we seek to persuade people. We are completely open before God, and I hope we are completely open to your consciences as well. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to be proud of us so that you may have a reply for those who take pride in the outward appearance rather than in the heart. Let those be sobering words for all of us. Not any amount of how much Bible study we're doing, Bible reading we're doing. I love what Paris Reed had, um, native Minnesotan, used to preach at Bethany Fellowship down in Minneapolis. He went down to Africa and he was so frustrated. People weren't coming to Christ and etc. And God said, I didn't send you there for you. I didn't send you there for them. I sent you there for me. They are monsters of iniquity. I sent you there for me. Guys, this is a really trembling message that I did not expect to speak on. But how many of us know what we ought to have been doing, but we're not doing it? We're not obeying the voice of the Lord. We're not seeking his face. We're not willing to take risks. We're not willing to say, Hineni, here am I. Here's my offering. Everything I have every right of my own, every offense. We don't want the freedom. We don't want the freedom that comes being in Christ. Because do you understand that when you are free in Christ, he can do whatever he wants with you at any moment. We say, oh yeah, we're free in Christ. Really? We really don't understand that. Because that means he gets to use you now, don't get me wrong, he's a good father, he's the everlasting father, he's good, he's kind, etc. Yes, we understand all that. But he also can give you the word, because I said so. And, and sadly, in this generation, 
we don't want to hear that, especially in America. We don't want to hear because I said so. Why do we do it? Because I said so. Me first. No, you can't make me get up, leave everything. I, I, I got a job, I got a pension, I got a house, my kids, my relationships, my family. What does Jesus say in, in Matthew? Hang on, I wrote it. Mark 10, Matthew 19. He who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Are we willing to leave behind everything? I'm speaking from experience. Made some, some people upset with some of my decisions recently. I mean, you know, Leanne died and she wanted this. And the Lord said, we get married and I'm taking you. And it was quick. And I'm like, Lord, why? Why all this? Why all these circumstances? Through four different people, independently of each other, he gave four words, because I said so. What do you respond to that? Other than yes, sir. We don't see ourselves as soldiers of Christ. We see ourselves as civilians of Christ. We think we have a right. We think we, even our human relationships that we have, which are good and given by God, they're wonderful. But when they stand in the way of his service, I'm sorry, they gotta go. Because your king is first. You are a Christian first. You are a believer and follower of Jesus first. You are Christ's representative here on this earth. As it says there, again, in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, he goes on, Paul goes on to say it. For if we are out of our mind, verse 13, it is for God. If we have a sound mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us. It forces us. Since we have reached the conclusion, if one died for all, then all have died, and he died for all. Here's the clincher, if you're ready to receive it. So that those who live, Paul's talking to the church. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the believers. Those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. I'm sorry, folks, you're not your own. Hard words. This is from the Lord. Submit. You're going to do some difficult things. We're coming into a season where God says, I want total commitment. I want 100% of you. I don't want you to hold back. You hold back. Sorry. I, I want nothing to do with it. Let him have his, you know, uh, dear brother suggested a song in the presence of angels. Lord, you're not coming as a shepherd or as a lamb. You're coming as fire. What do you think the furnace is for? There is dross in each and every one of us where God says, I will not stand it in my holy presence. No. If you want all of me, you'll get me. And nothing will come near you. To the point where you won't even exist here on this earth. I love this song. Not I yet through Christ in me. You live and move and have your being because of Jesus. Your existence here is because of Jesus. You came here because of Jesus. Y'all are here not because you want to sing some wonderful songs. And that's, that's awesome. I mean, we had awesome worship. But something in you said, I want more of Jesus. I want more of him. Well, guess what? He's going to give you an opportunity. Because this is not about us. This is about him. He wants people for total service. He wants people for everything. Take my finances. Take my life. I love the old hymn. 
Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Where are we? Abraham said, he, God told him, take your son, Genesis 22, your only son, in whom you love, as if God's like sticking a finger in it, and go and sacrifice him. And Abraham believed and it was counted to him to righteousness. He was fully convinced that God would have been able to raise him from the dead, Hebrews 11. And in a sense, he did get it back from the dead. Happened to me after Leanne died, a week later. Nathan Nathaniel, my oldest son, looks at me, deathly ill. Fever was up, and then all of a sudden he, he had like 105 fever, and I was like, Lord, what's going on? And he looked at me and said, Daddy, are you gonna give me up to the Lord? Because I don't want you angry at God. I said, okay, Lord Jesus, not my firstborn son, because he's been such a help. And God just quietly saying, give me your firstborn son. And I said, Lord, you know I cannot hold anything back from you. He's yours. We went to the hospital, antibiotics, just fine. God gave me back my son. What are you holding on to? Search the Lord. There's, there is something in your lives right now that you're holding on to that you're, that is troubling you. That God is just, he is a gentle shepherd. Savior like, a, what is it? Savior like a shepherd lead us. He, he, he is gentle, he is calm, he is kind, but he's a gentleman and he will not push. Because God loves a cheerful giver. I'm not talking about money. What I'm talking about is God wants your heart. He wants everything of you, your rights. Anytime you feel like, well, they shouldn't do that, but well, that's not right of them to do that. Well, you know what? Apparently it was because God let it happen. Are you going to get offended at that? Offended for someone else? God wants that portion of you that gets offended. We call that self. Let's call it what it is. Because God says, that's not gonna stand in my presence. I want all of you. It's like a bride just looks at her husband. I want all of you, all of you, every bit of you. What have you not given up? What are you holding on to? Jesus, show my, the people here what they're holding on to that is keeping them from total, total, uh, full total commitment and freedom where they can go unhindered. Because the fire only falls on a complete offering. It's fully, and then it's fully consumed. And then what? It's a pleasing aroma. So, the call is, and we'll pray with you as always. Lord, I lay this on the altar. Here it is. I've held on to it, and I'm sorry. You guys know what it is. Some of you have held on to it for 10 years. You've held on to it for 10 years where God's saying, I want to take you deeper. I want to take you further. I want you on an adventure with me, but you're still hanging on to it. Stop running from me. Run to me. It's the story of the little girl and her toy pearls and her daddy's got real pearls behind. But we're still hanging on. The moment you open your hand, he's able to fill it. Father in heaven, I just pray for those people right now, for those who are listening, all of heaven, heaven and earth, that ripples would occur where they would say, Lord, I've been holding on, holding on to my kids holding on to my wife, holding on to my husband, holding on to these human affections, where I want that more than Jesus. Lord, draw your people.
because we need the cross so that we can experience loss and fully appreciate resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, anybody needs prayer, if anybody's sick, we want to pray for you. Um, if there's something you need to leave at the altar, we want to pray with you. So, um, we'll just give a few minutes.